Alright, notice what it says in verse 38 of Mark chapter 9. It says, And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. So notice that phrase there, he that is not against us is on our part. What does that mean exactly? We see uh, it's mentioned also in Luke chapter 9, I believe verse 50, you know, he that is not against us is for us. And we're all pretty familiar with that saying, but it's one that it often gets misused. And I think it's important that we under uh, that we understand the context of it. And what I want to talk about this morning is I want to talk about avoiding, the title of my message is Avoiding Friendly Fire. Okay, Avoiding Friendly Fire. One of the tragedies of war is when soldiers die from friendly fire. It's always said there's always going to be casualties in war, but it's, it's just tragic when something happens, a mistake happens, and we do something that ends up killing people that are on our side. That is, that is a tragedy. And our military, you know, they do everything they can to avoid this. And I think as Christians, we need to make sure that we take some precautions to make sure that we don't cause spiritual casualties with friendly fire. And whether, and this applies to many things. This applies to, you know, destroying people with friendly fire, you know, within our church. You know, there's, you know, um, maybe even people in our community that aren't exactly like us. They don't exactly walk with us. But, you know, which ones are against us? Which ones are for us? How do we know the difference in these, these things? When it comes to other churches, maybe churches that we fellowship with, uh, or when it comes, you know, uh, which, how, how do we know how to handle things? How do we know uh, the right way to handle maybe a difference? Because I do, I think there's a lot of friendly fire that goes on in Christianity today. I think there's a lot of unnecessary casualties. And uh, turn over to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 14. And we need to realize we're capable of this. We need to realize that if we're not careful, we can be capable of destroying our own and hurting our own, hurting our own cause and what we do. But look what it says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 14. We have, it's a warning here. This is something that all of us are capable of. And I don't know about you, I don't want to do this, okay? And we are, we're in a war, all right? We're in a war spiritually. And you know what? If I'm going to be in a war, you know, I want to fight, all right? And I, maybe I like fighting more than I should. But if I'm going to fight, I want to make sure I'm getting the bad guys, all right? I don't want to get so going so crazy with the sword that I'm just chopping everybody's heads off and I'm killing people that are on my side, that are on my team. We want to be careful about that. Make sure we're doing it right. But it says in uh, Galatians 5.14, it says, For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. We've got to watch out. If, uh, we don't want to go biting and devouring each other. There are people, the Bible talks about that we're supposed to mark them. We're supposed to mark them that cause division. There's false prophets that we need to identify. There are wolves that we need to identify, that we need to expose, that we need to call out. For sure, there's people that are our enemies. We're going to see some verses on that. And while it can get fun sometimes, you know, it shouldn't be fun. That's a sin nature, you know, taking down the wolves and things like that. You know, I hope none of our soldiers are fighting these battles and having fun, you know, killing the enemy. But at the same time, you know, we can't, we, if we're not careful, we can just get bloodthirsty. And it's all, it's almost like some people enjoy the killing, enjoy taking people down. We got to watch out because if we're not careful, we can start biting and devouring each other and we can be consumed one of an, of another. And so I did. I've, I've enlisted in this army to fight. I want to fight. I want to fight a good fight. I got to be honest. Sometimes I enjoy the fight. And I know that's probably wrong. I need to work on that. But I am, I'm happy to take part. I want to take part. And those of us that are like that, you know, we've got to be careful to make sure we don't get overzealous. To make sure that we end up, you know, fighting the wrong people. And end up having, you know, taking out some people through friendly fire. So how can we know who to fight and who not to fight? And I, the statement that Jesus makes here, you know, he that is not against us is on our part. What does that mean? Because if we're not careful, we can take that verse too, and you can really take a real passive attitude with it. And it's often used in the wrong context. But let's look at, uh, go back to Mark chapter 9, and let's look at some of these verses before it. It's always important 
to look at context of everything that's being said. And we saw there in verse 30, how, um, when where Brother Mark started reading, you know, um, it talks about how they were disputing among the way. They're having this talk about who's going to be the greatest. Okay, these guys had they, they had that argument all the time over who is the greatest. Okay, now that's a pride problem right there. We shouldn't be caught up in that. We shouldn't be trying to move up the ranks, trying to achieve some status. And, but he said, you know, Jesus asked them in verse 33, and he came to Capernaum, being in the house, he asked them, what was it that you disputed among yourselves, by the way? And they held their peace. For by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. They held their peace because they knew they didn't have any reason to be fighting, but they were fighting. You know, have your parents ever, you know, as parents, have you ever asked your kids, you know, what are you guys doing? Nothing. You know, that's usually a sign of guilt right there. What were you guys fighting about? Nothing. Why are they saying that? They're embarrassed. They knew what they were fighting about was wrong. And that's exactly what the disciples are doing. This is a bad dispute. They're having a bad fight right here. Okay. Right here in this passage, notice they've got a bad spirit. They've got a spirit about, you know, moving up the ranks, about being a big shot. That's a bad spirit. And so verse 35, and he sat down and called the 12 and said unto them, if any man desire to be the first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. So he's saying, you know, if you receive you know, one of these children in my name that receiveth me, you know, you're, you receive, or, and then he said, uh, you know, what you do for a child, that's one of his. It's like doing something for him. You all see that? He's saying, if you receive me, you're not receiving me. You're receiving him that sent me. He's kind of showing how there's a connection here. All right. And the connection is to God. And those who are, are his are special. What you do for someone who belongs to Christ is a special thing to do because that's a special person. And you need to keep that in mind. And then, so right after he says this, after he brings this child, hey, you know, you receive me, you're not just receiving me, you're receiving him that sent me. I mean, and, you know, receiving a child of my name, this is a good thing. This is what we are about. But then, in the same thing, and we're all familiar with that passage, but in the same context, in the same situation that's going on, John speaks up. John, who is one of the sons of thunder, Okay, so John, who's one of the guys who's, you know, who's known for kind of being a hothead, having a temper. John, who also is one that's known for kind of wanting to move up the ranks. It was his mom that came to Jesus, you know, grant that my two sons may sit in your right hand and in your left hand and your kingdom. And all the disciples got mad about this. So keep all these things in mind to help you understand the context of what uh, Jesus is about to explain to him. Okay, because then John pipes up and he answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. Here's somebody else trying to do the work of Jesus, trying to, I think, imitate the disciples. Somebody who probably, you know, and it's interesting, Jesus does not say whether that man was authorized to cast out devils. I don't see in the Bible where he authorized just anybody to do that. But I don't see Jesus rebuking him either. He doesn't, but John did rebuke him. And Jesus said unto him, forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. You know what he's telling me? He's like, you know, maybe this guy, maybe I'm reading into this a little bit. I don't necessarily think that that guy you know, had the right to go casting out devils and doing things in Jesus name. But at the same time, Jesus tells him, Hey, you know what? Don't rebuke him. Don't forbid him. There's no way this guy is against us. He's doing things in my name. If he's doing that, he can't be speaking evil of me. All right. Evil is harm that you do to other people. This is not somebody that's against us. This is not somebody that's working against us. And if they're not working against us, he says they are on our part. So understand when we look at that, the context of everything that's been going on. You've got guys arguing about who's, who's the greatest, wanting to move up the ranks. You've got Jesus explaining, you know, that those who do good for even a little child in his name 
I mean, that's doing it for God. Look what it says in verse 41. Okay, same situation here. He says, For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Because you're special, because you belong to me, if somebody does something good for you, they're not losing their reward. You know what I think Jesus is saying right here? Hey, those people out there, even if they're misguided, even if they're a little off, these people are doing good to you. They're blessing you. You know what? They're, they're with us. They're on our part. They're special. They're not going to lose the reward for what they did. They've done something special. Why? Because they did something for you. And you do something for one of God's children, it's doing it for him. And look what it says in verse 42. And so it goes the opposite. If you're doing something against somebody, it says, for whoso, and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, and specific little ones, not just any little ones, ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. So right there, some pretty strong words right there for those who would do something against the children of God. And so when he says that he that is not against us is, is on our part, what does that mean exactly? Well, if somebody is not actively working against us, if somebody is not cursing us, if somebody is not hurting us, even if they're a little off, even if they're a little different, even if they've got some issues, even if they've got some baggage, Jesus said, they're on our part. Okay? So we need to understand that these people that are, if they're blessing us, they're doing good to us, God's going to reward those people. And it's real easy for us to sometimes maybe get caught up in some of the baggage they have, some of the issues they have, and want to start taking off their heads. And we don't need to do that. There's some things that we need, and there's some things we need to understand. So how can we tell, you know, who's not against us, who's on our part? Because said so you can take this passage the wrong way, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. But one th- there is a difference between someone who is against you and someone who's just different than you. Even if that person that's different is in fact an error. Look what it says in Proverbs 13, 10. It says, only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Okay, why did the disciples have that contention over who is the greatest all the time? It was a pride problem that they had. That was why those arguments came up. Why did these disciples have a problem? Hey, here's some guys out there trying to cast out devils in Jesus' name. Where do you think they got the idea of doing that? They got it from watching the disciples. These guys were watching the disciples. They're learning from them. They're trying to, they're, they're trying to imitate them. Okay? Were they doing it right? Probably not exactly right. Were they authorized to do it? Probably not. But here's the thing. These guys, they're trying to imitate the disciples. They're obviously not against them. They're obviously not an enemy. And wouldn't you think that somebody who's trying to imitate you, somebody who's trying to be like you and do what you're trying to do, Wouldn't you think those would be the easiest people in the world to win over? And are we not as believers in the business of recruiting people and winning people to Christ? Now, do we have enemies? Do we have people working against us trying to stop that? Absolutely. Those are the ones whose heads we want to remove, spiritually speaking. All right. We're not physically speaking. Absolutely not. Uh, We we will never kill anyone uh, that is working against us uh, spiritually. All right, the Jehovah's Witnesses are physically safe when I see them, but spiritually, they're in danger of hellfire. And but but I'll, but I'll never physically hurt them. And so, but uh, some sometimes someone that is against you, it's somebody that's trying to undo what you are doing or slow down what you're doing. That's what it means to be against somebody. They're working against us. And someone you know, and someone that is for you is someone that they may just be trying to help however they can. Maybe they see us doing a work and, hey, let's go help them. They might be misguided. They might be a little off. They might have some things wrong, things that they're not doing right, but they're trying to be a blessing. They're trying to help. They don't know how to help yet. They haven't learned. They don't understand a lot of things. There's a lot of people when they first get saved, they they do a lot of dumb stuff. They They just don't know. They've not been taught. They've not been around church. They've not been taught the things of God. They don't know the scriptures very well. They might be messed up on some doctrine. Maybe they've heard a lot of TV preaching. Maybe they come from a false religion and they get saved. Maybe they come into church and they've got some issues. They say some things wrong. And a lot of times you always got that real spiritual person in the church that wants to just straighten them out overnight. 
that just wants to jump down their throat because they got something wrong. They're not doing things exactly right. They're not dressing right. And these, but, but these people clearly, they, they love us. They want to be a blessing. They're trying to imitate us. You know, they're, you know, they're, they're clearly not against us. So why would we offend these people? Why would we, because understand if they're trying to be a blessing to us and if they are being a blessing and you'll see here in a little bit, I mean, being a blessing can just be the encouraging words. The Bible says they're going to get a reward for that. Why? Because we're special to God. We're his, are we not his people? Are we not the children of God? Are we not the church of God? Are we not doing the work of God? So why would God not be blessing people that are trying to be a blessing to us, even if they're a little misguided, even if they've got some issues? You know what we just need to do? We need to have some patience with these people. They're not going to lose their reward for what they're doing for us. They're not going to lose the reward for trying to be a blessing to us. So you know what? Let's not go get all spiritual. Let's not get all lifted up with pride and go taking their heads off whenever they just, they do something a little wrong. You know what? Have some patience. We do it with little children, don't we? We have patience with little children. Nobody gets mad at the babies when they mess their diapers. That's what babies do. But, you know, and when people first get saved, they're spiritual babes. They need, they need to grow up. They need to be, they need to be taught. And we, we need to understand that. We need to think about these things. And so, uh, you know, somebody that's for you, it's, maybe it's just somebody trying to help. Look what it says in 2 John chapter 1 and verse 10. Now, this is kind of, this is kind of a warning passage here about something not to do, but we can, we can, uh, definitely Take this and kind of reverse it, and you'll see I'm not taking this out of context. But it says in 2 John 1.10, If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. All right? So let's just use some common sense right here. We use this often talking about the Jehovah's Witness. All right? So somebody comes to your house, and they're bringing you a false gospel. The okay? Bible says don't bid him Godspeed. Bible says, you know, don't, don't bless them. Don't do that. Don't say, Hey, and I've had these people before when I've gone to their houses and they don't believe like we do, you know, they're Catholic or whatever, believe something completely different, but then they will go and they'll just butter me up about how great it is. Man, that's great that you're doing this. And, you know, that's nice. That encourages me. You know, I'm glad to get the blessings. I like that a lot better than getting cussed out. I really do. But at the same time, sometimes I'm like, why are you blessing me? Do you realize what I, I, I'm trying to get people out of your church? You know, do you realize what I'm doing is contrary to what you believe and what you promote? Why are you encouraging me right now? You should be cussing me out, you know, but, uh, but so if, if we are partaking of somebody's evil deeds by blessing them, then wouldn't somebody be partaking in our good deeds by blessing us? You think about those that are out there that encourage us, that that try to help us, you know. And there's there's people like that even in this community that, you know, they have they've they've been a blessing before. They've they've got issues. We've had pe- there's there's been a couple people here in town that's sent us tithe checks and they don't even come to the church here before. They don't do it real regular, but I mean, hey, that's a blessing. God will reward them for that. Why? We're His church. Hey. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell these people the truth. You know, when I talk to them, I'm going to tell them, hey, y'all need to be in church, man. Don't just, don't just send your money, you know, come, you know, come to church too. But at this, I'm not going to go out there and egg their house. I'm not going to go out there and be mean to them. You know, if they're willing to give us their money, I mean, I think we've got hope of reaching those people. I don't want to end that person. I think if, if they're doing that, if they're being a blessing like that, I think we can win them over. And we and we're going to try to win them over. I'm not going to go out there and fight with those people. And so you know, just somebody being a blessing to us, they clearly are not against us. And understand too that Catholics, well, the Catholics are against us. But that Catholic, any Catholic that is blessing me for what I'm doing, is not a very good Catholic. Uh, if they obviously do are not strong, they are not promoting that teaching. They're not fighting for that cause. That person is somebody that we would call maybe somebody, you know, there's a lot of people that are in kind of neutral positions. 
They are not an imposing force. You know what these people are? They're lost. Or straying. They're lost sheep. Those are the ones we're going after. Jesus said, I'm going for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who are they? Those are those people that were out wandering. Those people that were in sin. No, that's why Jesus was so much nicer to publicans and harlots than he was the religious crowd. Because the religious crowd, they were working against him. They were teaching something different. They were teaching another gospel. They're teaching a work salvation. But these people, that these publicans and sinners, why were they doing those wicked things? Because they're just lost. They're just following the flesh. And But those people, they loved Jesus. Those people believed His words. And they were the ones that got saved. And that's why you see Jesus being so much nicer to morally evil people than the morally good people. Because the morally good people were working against Christ with their false gospel. And so some people, they might be leaning our direction, but they're going to need some time. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1 says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet are ye able... For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Notice Paul here, he's told, you know, he's rebuking them for being carnal. He's rebuking them for continuing to be babes in Christ. But at the same time, he was holding back. He's like, I'm not giving you the meat, I'm giving you the milk. You know what he was doing? He was being patient. Now he's pushing them a little bit here. And that's fine. We ought to do that. We ought to push people a little bit. We ought to encourage them. Hey, it's time to move on. Hey, it's time to get out of the walker and start walking on your own. Hey, it's time to you know, lose the baby food and start trying some meat. That's what we, ought to be try, we ought to be encouraging people for that. We ought to encourage people to get saved. Hey, you know what? You've had enough of the lovey-dovey, fluffy sermons. You know, come to listen to our preacher who will give, give you the tough stuff. Give you the real meat. And you know, man, when you've had real food, you never want to go back to the baby food. Babies, they go nuts over that baby food until they start getting the real stuff. And then they don't want that anymore. But you don't start them with the meat. You don't start them with the tough stuff. But we need to be encouraging people to get to that. And many people are out there. They're coming our way. They're, they're babes in Christ, maybe. They're, they're just starting out. But we've got to be careful to not go shoving meat down their throat before they're ready and just have a little bit of patience. Put up with some stuff. You know, you don't get mad at your baby when it throws up that first time it's, eat, it's eating some stuff. But, and sometimes if we're not careful, we start shoving things down people's throats too fast, they're going to start up chucking. But we, we've got to be patient. Hey, let's help them clean up the mess and let's, all right, let's back up a little bit. Let's slow it down and, and gradually introduce them to some of these things. So the, Bi- the Bible doesn't tell us in this passage, if this person succeeded in casting out the devils, it doesn't tell us if he was authorized to do it. But I think it's possible they were just trying to imitate the disciples of Jesus. They wanted to be like them. And those who try to imitate what we do, they're going to be the easiest ones to win over. And they're the last ones that we should try chopping the heads off of. We need to, we need to work with them. We need to be friends to them. We need to love them and help them. And so this doesn't mean this passage too. People do, they'll, they can take this passage and, well, you know, the, the Presbyterians, they're not against us. You know, I mean, you go ask most religions out there, hey, do you hate Baptists? Oh, no, I, I don't hate anybody. Well, then they're, they're on our part. All right, is, is that what that means? Absolutely not, okay? But look what it says in Philippians 3, verse 17. Philippians 3.17, it says, Brethren, be ye followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us, for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Paul warned me, he said, listen, there's some people out there, I warned you, I, I was crying about it to get the message across to you that there's some people you shouldn't mess with. There's some people that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Why? Because they mind 
earthly things. These are people who are teaching a works-based salvation. People, you know, these are the, you know, the, in his time, you know, the Judaizers and things like that. And we need to understand that there, that the people out there that are preaching a works-based salvation are in fact against us. They are enemies of the cross of Christ. They might say they are for us. That's what the false prophet's going to do. That's what the wolf in sheep's clothing is going to do. But if they're teaching a contrary message, something that go, goes against what we teach, something that goes against true salvation, not somebody that's just mixed up a little bit, not somebody that's, you know, there's a difference between somebody who's just mixed up a little bit or than somebody who is actively working against us. There is a difference between somebody who has come out of a false religion who is coming out of false doctrine and is moving our way than someone who is just actively teaching heresy. And we've got to learn to recognize the difference because none of us are perfect now and none of us ever were perfect. I mentioned in Sunday school, I found a message I preached about four or five years ago and I was, I was like, that wasn't right. I got that wrong. But you know what? I'm glad somebody didn't find that back then and listen to it and just you know go out there posting it online exposing tommy mcmurtry the heretic I, i'm thinking about taking some of these messages i preached wrong in the past and doing some videos exposing tommy mcmurtry and this is what i'm going to do you know this is what, if i do if i take the time to do this when i expose myself i'll be able to do it accurately because i know myself really well but here's what i'll say about tommy mcmurtry who was wrong on some things I can say on good authority that that guy who was wrong on some things was doing the best he could, was trying, he was learning, he was submissive to God, but he just had a bunch of junk that was just in his head from a lot of people that he trusted that he had never been challenged on. But then that guy heard other people preaching the truth on those things and realized Oh, I had that wrong. And he fixed it. And, you know, it's continuing to grow and continue to do better. And I'm glad somebody didn't go and chop off my head back then. I'm glad somebody didn't come and say, are you even saved? Because I'd have been like, what? I knew I was, I was, when I was teaching some things that weren't exactly right, I was still saved. There's no doubt about that. And if some ding dong would have come along because I was a little off and said, are you even saved? I would have said, are you a moron? What's wrong with you? I would not have listened to that person. And I think, I think God, it, and look, we've got people on our side that can just be some of the biggest knuckleheads in the world. Sometimes they have no patience. None of us are the perfect picture of Jesus Christ. And yet we do, we figure some things out and then what do we do? We go chopping off the heads of everybody that's got it wrong. Well, you've only had it right for a year. And so now you have the right to go destroy everybody who wasn't, who is not you today, even though you were them just one year ago, six months ago. And you're going to go tearing all those people down even though they're coming our way, even though they're learning, even though they're growing, we're going to destroy those people. That's ridiculous. That is not what we are in the business of doing. And so a person can say they're for us, but they're preaching other gospel. They're against us. Romans eleven twenty eight. He talks about, you know, it's concerning the gospel. Talking about the Jews. They are enemies for your sake. Why? They're preaching something else. They're preaching, uh, they're preaching a false gospel and they weren't even coming close to coming their way. They were actively working against them. They were fighting them. They were persecuting them. They were, you know, they were killing them in many cases. And so a religion can say they respect us and they're for us, but if they're leading people contrary to the doctrine of the Bible, they're against us. And I'm not seeing these Protestant religions getting any closer to the truth. I'm seeing them getting farther from the truth. You know, and there is, if, but if I see some groups that they're, hey, they're figuring things out. They're getting things right. They're improving. They're getting better. I'm going to identify that and I'm going to work with those people. I'm going to encourage those people. I'm going to try, I'm going to try to help them so they can come all the way. So those who are being a blessing to us, they are going to be rewarded by God because of the fact that we're special to God. In Genesis chapter 12, 
In verse 3, that's when God told Abraham, I'm going to bless them that bless you and curse them that curseth you. And we see in Galatians that you know we have that promise of Abraham. Why? Because we are the seed of Abraham because of Jesus Christ. God's going to bless people that bless us. So if there's people out there, if there's other preachers out there that are maybe from a crowd that had a lot of things wrong, but then they're, they're, they're learning from us. They're, they're getting things right. And especially when I see it's people too that came from some of the same junk that I came from. And I, and I, I, can, t- I can tell. It's like, man, I get where they're coming from. I, I used to think that way too. I had some of that junk in my head too. But man, they're coming around. They're coming, the, they're, they're coming the right way. They're being a blessing to me. They're being, they're being friendly to me. They, they are, they are personally a blessing to me. And if God says, I'm going to bless them that bless you, why would I curse the one that God's planning on blessing? Why would I attack the one that God has promised to bless? Did he say, I'm going to bless those who bless you that have everything right in their life? No, he said, I'm going to bless those that bless you. You know what? If God can bless them, I can bless them too. And I believe if I, and, and do it, and when it comes to blessing them, okay, God says he's going to, if it's a lost person, okay, if it's somebody who's not saved, they're not working against you, they're just lost, they're in darkness, they're straying, but they're being a blessing to us, they're being good to us. If God has promised to bless those who bless us, what do you think one of the best blessings God could give them is salvation? Now, they're not going to get saved because they're being a blessing to us. But don't you think that the Holy Spirit's going to be working on their heart? Don't you think the Holy Spirit's going to give us opportunities to win them to Christ? God's going to want them to get saved. God's going to want to bless them with physical things too. But do you think God wants to bless them with physical things and then skip salvation? I think the people that are being good to us, the people that are good to our church, the people that are a, that are a blessing to us, are going to be some of the first people that God's going to try to save. So I'm going to try to win those people over. If there's preachers that are out there that are being a blessing to us that are being a blessing that even to, to me personally, I know God wants to bless them. Why can't I bless them too? And if God's wanting to bless these preachers, don't you think he, God's going to want to bless them by teaching them the right doctrine and getting them, getting them straightened out on those things like he did with me? So, you know, I'm going to be a blessing to those people. I'm not going to be the one beating them up if they're a little off on something, especially if somebody that was a little off on some things too at one time. And yet people, and God, God blessed me. I'm going to, I'm going to bless those people. I don't care what anybody says. And so, you know, if truth is on our side and someone is neutral, they're not working against us or they're leaning our direction. Why wouldn't we think we can win them over? You see, man, you know, I, my wife, she's, she's kind of the pessimist. And I'm the optimist in the relationship. All right. Maybe it's just the optimist in me. But I'm so convinced that we're preaching the truth here. I've, I've just got this misguided idea that I'm going to win everybody over. I, I, for some reason, I have this attitude. You know, when I get up and I preach something in the church, I'm going to change everybody's minds. You know why? And, and, and I don't feel like I got to be tricky to do it. I don't feel like I got to play tricks on people. I'm going to show these people the Bible. I'm, you know, we all judge people the way we are in our own heart. I love the book. I believe the book. I'll let the book change me. Other people do the same thing too. I'm going to get up. I'm going to pre. I, I don't have to do anything tricky. Nothing deceptive. I don't have to manipulate. I'm just going to. I'm going to tell them. And I think that I think people are going to come my way. If I get the opportunity to talk to some of these preachers, if they will just give me a chance, if they'll just be friendly with me, I will win these people over. You know why? Because the truth is on my side. But you know what? I've noticed people who are not confident in their beliefs, people who are deceptive, people are tricky. You know what? They are, they're, they're manipulative. They're not confident. They don't want to sit down and open the Bible. You know what they want to do? They want to do a bunch of name calling. They want to do a bunch of attacking. They want to take your head off. That tells me they're wrong right there. Or that tells me that they have no confidence in their doctrine and what they believe. And so I mean, I'll, I'll face off with anybody. I, I've let, you know, I've faced off with some of the big names. I've let them rip me up one side and down the other, thinking that if I just got the opportunity to open my mouth, which they never really give me an opportunity to do that and show them some scriptures, I might win some of these people over. And so I'll, I'll do that. I'll be friendly with a person that's just willing to talk to me and be nice about it. Cause I, I'm convinced that truth is on my side. 
So I don't need to worry about that. And I'm not worried. I'm so convinced I'm right. I'm so sure of what the Bible says. I'm not worried that this guy that I'm friends with, that maybe is coming my direction on something, is going to lead me astray. I think I'm going to lead him to truth. That's my attitude. Maybe that'll get me in trouble, but I'm so sure and I'm so confident in what I believe in the Bible, I'm not worried about that. And I'm definitely, I'm definitely not going to go chopping his head off. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, win, I'm going to win him over. Nobody completely changes overnight, too. That's the thing you got to understand. Nobody completely changes overnight. It takes a long time. It takes a long people to get off on some things, and it takes them a long time to get right. And so it's important that we learn how to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. We've got to remember where we once were. And we need to treat others the way we would have wanted to be treated. Matthew 7, 12, Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is law and the prophets. Okay? If I get something wrong, you know, I don't, you know, I, I, there's a way I would want to be handled. And you know what? I need to handle people that same way. And that's exactly what I do. I, I handle people the way I would want to be handled. I don't want to get shot at. I don't want to get a pie thrown in the face. I don't want to get my head chopped off. You know, I, I, I don't want the, that's not how I want it handled. I want it handled a certain way. And so I'm going to handle it that way with other people. And how we judge others and how, you know, how we ju- judge other people's thoughts and actions, it is a good indication of how we really are in our hearts. And that's where people give themselves away. You know what I've, whenever, what I've noticed too, one of the most revealing things about people was when they start accusing me of things. And that, that are just dead wrong. And I'm like, well, where does that come from? Well, I know where it comes from. That's how they think. That's how they are. They reveal their hearts by how they judge other people. And when I see people make judgments about me that are just dead wrong, it tells me exactly what's in that person's heart. And people are giving themselves away by that kind of thing. And so... You need to keep that in mind. You know, when you're going to be all harsh on people, when you're going to be calling people all these names and judging them uh, in extremes, you need to understand this is showing what you really are. And so when it comes to, you know, somebody, maybe this is just a prodigal, but, the, but he's on his way home. You know, ever since I was a kid, I heard the story of the prodigal son. And I, to this day, I have an image in my head of the father sitting on the front porch. He looks up on the hill, you know, sees... You know, sunsets behind him, sees the prodigal. I don't know if I ever saw it on a movie or something when I was a kid. I don't know. If you have the same picture, maybe we saw it on one of the Bible movies. All of a sudden, you know, he sees him all dressed nasty and everything. Starts coming down the hill. Man, the father takes off for him. I got the picture in my head. I've seen it a million times. Uh, every time somebody preaches it, every time I read it, I see that. I see that in my head. But you know what I see today with a lot of preachers? When that prodigal comes over the hill... I see the father pulling out a sniper rifle and shooting him. <laughs> What'd you shoot him for? He wasn't home. But he was coming home. Yeah, but he wasn't here yet. You just waited five minutes, he'd have gotten here. But you went and you shot him. Why did you have to do that? Or I picture him, uh, they let him get here, but then they go and you know the father goes and they embrace him, but he still smells like pigs. Get out of here, you smell like a pig. Well, man, he needs, he needs some love, all right? He needs some new clothes. He needs to be cleaned. And, but what do we do? Ah, he still smells like a pig. Well, but he's coming back. He's going the right direction. Let's give him some time. Let's give him a bath. But then you know what? Somebody smells long enough, you give him a bath. You know what? The stink's in their pores, isn't it? I mean, the stink is just inside of them. And it's going to take a while for all of that stink to go away. And we've just got to be patient. And that's what that father did. He ran, he embraced him, he put a robe on him, put a ring on him. And I, he, you think putting that robe on him got rid of the smell? You think it ended right there? No, he went and took a bath. And you know what? He still probably smelled for a few days. After eating that hog food, that's, you know, some people, you, could, you can give them a bath and they still smell. They just got so much junk inside them. And it will take some time. And we've got to stop shooting prodigals that are just coming over the hill. He looks like an enemy. Yeah, but he's coming our way. He's coming back. Let's accept. Let's let's run out. Let's embrace him. 
Let's help them out. And that's what we've got to do with people in our community. There, there's, there's people out there that are the enemies. They're working against us. All right. Spiritually speaking, we'll take those people down. But the ones who are neutral, the ones who are not working against us, the ones who are being a blessing to us, especially they are on our part. Let's love those people. God's going to bless them. Why don't we let us be the ones that God uses to bless those people? Let's let's win these people over. I'm going to keep doing that with people in this community. I want to do that with other preachers. If they're being a blessing to me, I'm going to be a blessing right back to those people. I'm going to, I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to change what I believe. Well, I made friends with this new guy and he's off on this. I'm going to stop preaching this doctrine. Yeah, forget that. I'm, I'm preaching what I believe. And if it's different than what they believe, then you know what? I'm going to help them grow by learning how to be a big boy and deal with somebody disagreeing with them without crying. And I'll, I'll, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to do the right thing because the last thing we need in a world that's getting more and more wicked as we have fewer and fewer people standing with us, the last thing I need to do is go killing somebody with friendly fire. Somebody who's actually on my side. And we see even in our country when they go and they fight in other parts of the world, there's people sometimes that, you know, if they're fighting in these Muslim countries, they got to learn how to identify the good ones from the bad ones. Not everybody in those Muslim countries, while they all might look alike, while none of them are Americans, while none of them probably have the same values that we have, there are some over there that don't have a problem with them, that maybe are willing to help them, that hate the, the bad ones. And you know what? Our military, they don't go mowing those people down. They try to make sure they get the bad ones, the ones who are fighting against them. But those ones that are neutral... They leave them alone try to, and try to win them over to their side. And that's what we've got to learn how to identify. We've got too many of us, sometimes we get a little overzealous. And i got to be careful myself. And we just start mowing everybody down. Let's not do that. Let's, let's get in the bit, business of winning people over. So with that, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, your forgiveness, your blessing. Dear God, I pray you help us to take these things to heart, Lord. These people out there that, that are good to us, that are a blessing to us, Lord, you're going to bless those people. And I pray you'll help us to, to love them and uh, help us to learn how to identify the difference between, uh, Lord, an enemy and someone who's uh, just neutral. And I pray you'll help us to uh, just be in the business of recruiting people and uh, bringing people to you for salvation. In your name we pray. Amen.